They want to bring in former Deputy Chief of Staff to President George W. Bush, also Fox News contributor Carl Rove. Carl, good to see you. Good morning. Your thoughts on the President's trip so far? So far, so good. Uh, started out wisely in the place, the places that it would be more war warmly received. Uh, and uh, as Newt Gingrich made uh, the point earlier, historic visits, uh, Saudi Arabia, Israel. Now he's in the tough part where he's going to be meeting with the European Union yesterday, NATO today, uh, G7 leaders the day after that. So, uh, but, but he, there are a lot of good lessons for the domestic Trump from the foreign President Trump, and that is be scripted, <clears throat> be well organized, stay on message. Uh, don't clutter the message of the day. One big thing that you say each day is sufficient. And uh, let's, let's hope that when uh, the foreign policy Trump comes home, domestic policy Trump picks up some of those same lessons. But Carl, it's Dega McDowell. Does the talking turn into walking, so to speak? Does what we've heard from the president, whether it's a unification with the, the Arab world and to, to fight radical Islamic terrorism, and the like, even moving on to Rome, does it turn into actual action, you think? Well, that's, that's the rub. I think it will because conditions have made it such. But look, this is a difficult journey. You remember uh, President Bush, 43, was the president who got a lot of these um, Arab countries into the fight. That's why we have air bases, military installations, t uh, terrorist mm -hmm. intelligence centers uh, in the, these, this part of the world that are, that are in the fight. But it's, uh, it, I think in a way, ironically, President Trump owes President Obama a debt of thanks because President Tr Obama did it so badly in the region mm -hmm. and convinced these people that the United States was an unreliable ally that Donald Trump is benefiting from, from that because he's made it clear we're in this fight, we're going to beat the, the uh, ISIS and Islamic terrorism, and we want you to be in the fight and we will be a resolute ally. And he's demonstrating that not only with his words but his actions. The Saudis very concerned about. Uh, about uh, their, their, their military apparatus and wanting American technology and weapons, uh, and they got him. And yeah. so, uh, but, but you're right. We'll, we'll see how it goes forward. But, but he's got in place a team with Mattis at Defense and Tillerson at State and McMaster at National Security Council that have the ability, as, as again, Speaker Gingrich pointed out, long-time relationships in the region they are going to benefit the president in his uh, fulfillment of his policies. Meanwhile, he's meeting with Prime Minister uh, Theresa May in the U.K., and setting to meet with President Trump in Brussels today. She's going to be addressing this leak story, the recent leaks by U.S. intelligence officials to the press surrounding the Manchester bombing investigation. What's your take on this? There are some reports that are saying investigators have stopped sharing information with the United States regarding the bombing. We're not sure what to believe. Is this just a talking point or is this a real uh, concern? Well, we don't really know where the leaks came from, whether they came from British sources or American sources who got this information. But it is problematic to the investigation. Uh, Americans moved the name of the, the New York Times moved the name, and American media moved the name of the bomber while the Brits were still holding it close. And then pictures of the bomb. This is, this is vital mm -hmm. information to the investigation, and they'd rather have that become public much later than earlier. And so this is problematic, and she's probably going to speak to the president about it. My suspicion is they're also talking to, uh, to, to British intelligence sources and law enforcement that had received this information as well. Very troubling that the New York Times would do this. Uh, this did not help the cause of uh, the security of the people of England or, frankly, the cause of the security of the American people as well. So the intelligence community is still undermining this president, or you think maybe it's uh, the intelligence community in, in Britain? Well, it's, it's intelli it's, it could be somebody in the intelligence oper operatives there or here, or it could be somebody in law enforcement there. I don't know. Okay. I want to be careful about using the name community, though. I have general trust in the American intelligence community. There may be okay. people who disagree with the administration's policies. I worry more about the State Department than I do the CIA or the, the NSA in, in providing information like this. There's nothing, intelligence professionals would know that there's nothing to be gained and a lot to be lost by providing this material to the New York Times. A very good point. Yeah. Well, is there a reason why the U.S. intelligence community or um, individuals haven't come out to speak about this? Because you're hearing it in the U.K. Uh, they're saying that we leaked something. So why haven't we defended ourselves? Well, because you know who knows who leaked, and uh, I'm mm -hmm. sure I'm sure the responsible leadership of the CIA doesn't want to come out and say, well, you know. Uh, 
we didn't when they don't know whether or not somebody did. So better hmm. not to say anything if you don't know what the answer is. Yeah. You know, Carl, uh, Steve Cortez here, turn it back to, to home uh, because you're the, the expert at messaging and strategy. W what does the president, when he gets back, what does he need to change to message better? How can the White House do this? For example, uh, they just announced that they're going to have a rally next week uh, in Iowa. Um, I believe it's in Sioux Falls. But anyway, uh, are the rallies a good idea? What, what, needs to, what needs to be done once he returns home to continue the momentum, which he seems to have from overseas? in terms of messaging here. Yeah, specifically as it yeah. relates to health care, by the way, after the CBO scoring, yeah. Carl. Yeah, look, um, first of all, l let's take the issue of rallies. I'm very dangerous. He loves being in the sort of warm bath of enthusiasm and cheers and applause that he gets at these rallies. A and that's good. That's a nice picture. The question is, what is the message that's delivered? He went to Harrison, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, on the hundredth day of, of his of his presidency, and what did he spend the first eleven minutes doing? Excoriating the media. So that was the story. It wasn't. I am focused like a laser on jobs and prosperity mm -hmm. and, and, and getting greater economic growth, so you have a bigger paycheck, a better future, you know, so your kids will have the opportunities that you had. None of that was there because he focused on the thing that sort of the impulse of the moment. I'm in a crowd. They love me. I'm, I'm going to share with them my angst. I'm angry at the press and we got 11 minutes of that and the headlines were all in my opinion bad because they did not advance his agenda they adva advanced his his anxieties and his concerns and his anger at at, at uh, political actors like the like the press so the question is are, what is that rally going to be like is that going to be a speech that is scripted in which the, we hear from the president about what his goals and his priorities are and he draws us together as a country or is this going to be something where we're going to get him just sort of spewing out angry things that he has about people whom he thinks have offended him uh, Saudi Arabia that speech I think uh, speaker King which was absolutely right 42 minutes st d deliberate people had obviously thought about what he wanted to say there it was very good now I'm not suggesting a 42 minute long speech but I'm suggesting the same underlying principles a deliberate attempt to communicate a message that matters to the American people a focus on that message a deliberateness to it and and don't get stuck uh, si stuck off in in side arguments or punching down or creating unnecessary controversies yeah well I guess uh Will he be able to do that with the health care plan? Will he be able to get, get this across the line and then do tax reform, which is what the American people want, this agenda done? Yeah. Well, well, on tax reform, excuse me, on tax reform, absolutely critical he get this done. Right. Absolutely critical they get repeal and replace of Obamacare. It might be the time right now to step back and not just pick up on health care or even tax reform, but to pick up on some of the messages that, that your, your upcoming guest, uh, Director Mulvaney, talked about this week. Why is he trying to do these things? He, he needs to yeah. step back and put a big frame on it, and he needs to, and he needs to deal with some of the real uh, you know, attacks that are going to be made on this. I think Mulvaney did a great uh, job this week in mm. defending the budget, and we need to hear some of that from the president, too. But All fundamentals, right. 30,000 feet. I'll